Angelica is that which clings or leech-like substance. On the contrary, Ibn Qayyim was demonstrating the agreement between the Quran and the Greek medicine, their agreement in error. A final witness is the commentary of Baydawi in 1200 AD. Here we have the commentary, we have the, 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 we have the Quran here, we have his, his commentary, and here it's been translated, and he says, then from Alaka, a piece of solid blood is his explanation of Alaka. Alaka is underlined, that's from the Quran. And here's his explanation, a piece of solid blood. Then he goes on, then from a piece of meat from the Quran. A piece of meat originally as much as can be chewed, and so forth. As I mentioned at the beginning of this study, it has been said that the idea of the embryo developing through stages is a modern one, and that the Koran is anticipating modern, modern embryology by depicting differing stages. Yet we have seen that Aristotle, Hippocrates, the Indians, and Galen have all discussed the stages of embryological development during the thousand years before the Koran. And after the coming of the Koran, the account of the different stages as described by the Koran and the Greek doctors, was carried on in the teachings of Avicenna and Ibn Qayyim, and is essentially the same as that taught by Galen and those preceding him. Comparing, concerning the bone stage, it's clear, as Dr. Moore demonstrated so capably in his textbook, that muscles start forming from the somites at the same time as the cartilage models of the bones. There's no bone stage where there's a skeleton sitting here and then and then the, the, the muscles are plastered around it. It is equally clear that alaka in the Quran means clot, and that the Quraysh who heard Muhammad speaking understood him to be referring to the menstrual blood as the female contribution to the developing baby. Therefore, we can conclude that during all these years, the Quranic verses on embryology, saying that man is created from a drop of sperm which becomes a clot, were in perfect accord with the science of the first century of the Hejra, of the time of the Koran. But when compared with the modern science of the 20th century, Hippocrates is in error, Aristotle is in error, Galen is in error, and the Koran is in error. They are all in serious error. Now we're going to look at a little bit about moonlight. Does the Quran state that the moon gives off reflected light from the sun before this was common knowledge? In the Surah of Noah, 71, 15, 16, it says, See ye not how Allah has created the seven heavens one above another and made the moon a light, nur, in their midst and made the sun as a lamp, siraj? The moon is called a light, Arabic nur and the sun a lamp, Siraj. Some Muslims claim that since the Quran uses different words speaking from about the light of the sun and the light of the moon, it reveals that the sun is a source of light, while the moon only reflects light. This claim is implied very strongly by Shabir Ali in his booklet, Science in the Quran, and stated clearly by Dr. Zakir Naik in his video, is the Quran God's word, as you will now see clearly. The light that we have, the light that we obtain from the moon, where does it come from? So he will tell me that previously we thought that the light of the moon was its own light. But today, after science has advanced, we have come to know that the light of the moon is not its own light, but it's a reflected light of the sun. I will ask him a question that it is mentioned in this Quran, in Surah Al-Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 61, blessed is he who has created the constellation and placed therein a lamp and a moon which has reflected light. 
the Arabic word for moon is Qamar. And the light described there is Munir, which is borrowed light, or Noor, which is a reflection of light. The Quran mentions that the light of the moon is reflected light. You say you discovered it today. How come it's mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago? He will pause for a time. He won't reply immediately. And then may say, maybe, maybe it's a fluke. I don't argue with him. For sake. Near the end of the video, we heard Dr. Nike explain the Arabic word for moon is Qamar, and the light described there is Munir, which is borrowed light, or Nur, which is a reflection of light. Please do not forget what he said. Munir is borrowed light, and Nur is reflected light. Not only is this claimed to be a statement in keeping with scientific truth, but it is also claimed to be scientifically miraculous, since this was supposedly only discovered relatively recently. It is correct that the moon does not emit its own light, but only reflects the light of the sun. But this was known already almost a thousand years before Muhammad. Aristotle in about 360 BC discussed knowing that the earth was round by its shadow on the moon. He could see the earth's shadow crossing the moon if he knew that moonlight is reflected light. If you still insist that this is a miracle of scientific knowledge, then we must ask ourselves, do the Quranic words themselves support this claim? Siraj. First we shall look at Siraj. In Surah Noah, which was read above, in Surah al forkan 2561, it is simply lamp, referring to the sun. In Surah Naba 78.13, Sirajan Wahjan means a dazzling lamp, again indicating the sun. The words Nur and Munir come from the same Arabic word. Root. The word Munir is used six times in the Quran. Four times, Surahs al Imran 3184, Al Hajj 228, Lukman 3120, and Fatir 3535, it is the phrase Kitab al Munir, which Yusuf Ali translates as a book of enlightenment. And P Piktal uses the scripture giving light. Clearly, this indicates a book which is radiating the light of knowledge. Nothing about reflection. Nur. It says in Surah Noah 7116 and Yunus 10.5 that Allah made the light, the moon a light. Thus we find that the Quran says that the moon is a light, and it never says that the moon reflects light. Moreover, in other verses, the Quran says that Allah is a nur, a light. Surah Nur 2435, one of the most beautiful passages in the Quran reads. Allah is the light, nur, of the heavens and the earth. The parable of his light is as if there was a niche, a niche, and within it a lamp, the lamp enclosed in glass, the glass as it were a brilliant star, and so forth. Thus we see that the word nur is used for both the moon and Allah. Are we going to say that Allah gives off reflected light? I think not. But if you continue to insist that nur, used for the moon, means borrowed or reflected light, and we saw above that Allah is the light nur of the heavens and the earth, what is the source of this light, siraj, of which Allah is only a reflection? Think about it. If Allah is named nur or reflected light, who or what is the siraj? Well, the Quran tells us who the siraj is. But the answer will shock you. In Surah Al-Ahzab 33, 45, 46, we find, O Prophet, truly we have sent thee as a witness, a bearer of glad tidings and a warner, and as a lamp spreading light. Here it says that Muhammad is the lamp spreading light. In Arabic, it is Wasirajan Muniran. Linguistically and spiritually, this is the end of the discussion. Linguistically, Siraj and the adjective Munir are used together for the same shining thing, the person Muhammad. It's clear Munir does not mean reflected light in this verse or in any other verse. It means shining. The people of Muhammad's time understood that the moon was shining and they were right. Just as the people of Moses' time understood that the sun was the greater light and the moon the lesser light and they were right. But if you insist that the Arabic words Nur and Munir mean reflected light, then based on the use of these words in the Quran, Muhammad is like the sun and Allah is like the moon. 
Does Dr. Knight really want to say that Muhammad is the source of light and Allah is only his reflection? Why are these so-called scientific claims made which no Muslim can support if he makes a serious study of his own Quran? In a dialogue like tonight, it makes honest.